Ghost Recon Breakpoint is really about putting you in a tough situation. It's taking all the strong aspects of Ghost Recon Wildlands, which were the big open world, the four player leashless co-op, and the PvP elements we had, and bring them to a new level, adding survival aspects. And with the bad guy you're fighting, who is called Walker, and who used to be a ghost, and now he's turned into a bad guy wolf, and he's played by actor John Buntal. Walker! Sorry, Weaver. When in this game we mean survival, we mean military survival. How are militaries behind enemy lines surviving? What players can expect from the story in Breakpoint is a, a deeper and more immersive narrative experience than they may be accustomed to with Ghost Recon. The core team really had a vision of expanding on the Ghost Recon fantasy. How do we take Ghost Recon to the next level? And really the solution lies in the narrative. Deeper narrative connects the player more to the experience so that you're more invested, you're more motivated because you now have a connection to characters, to circumstances, to the overarching sort of narrative trajectory of the story. We're going to battle with the soldiers that we used to be. Ghosts. How do you structure narrative around a character that begins as an empty vessel? And I can speak only for myself and sort of how I approach writing and developing for this kind of a project, but I think it really starts with the characters around the main character. It's easy to say that Cole Walker is the antagonist. He's the big bad former ghost that you have to fight. That man is a traitor. How can we make sure that the player understands he's facing something tough? And there's nothing better than a villain. We had a few names in mind, and the top one was John, mainly because he, one, can play good guys and bad guys at the same time, and also because of the stuff he did before, we knew he would have a knowledge about military techniques, he would be easy to work with, for instance, in mocap sessions. And we were lucky because he accepted, and we are very happy of the collaboration. I've had enough. What makes it compelling is that your enemy, your antagonist, was you, ostensibly, before this sort of shift in behavior, shift in philosophy and ideology. Life is not black or white, it's always some nuances of gray. A good way of expressing this is by having a bad guy where you can kind of understand what he's doing to make you think and also to make it more interesting as a story. Soldiers experience internal conflict. All of us have been in positions where we've had to sort of check ourselves on our own ethics and morality, and we've all been in situations that have been challenging, and it's the conflict in Walker that makes it intriguing and compelling because you could potentially take the same stance. What he views as the real dangers and what he sort of sees as his mission, his role in all of this, anyone could potentially follow the same path, and that's what makes conflict between Nomad and Walker so intriguing. It's good to see you, Nomad. They are separated by a thin hair of, of ideology, and yet they have to fight. Good old nomad. You always were righteous. The point was to create a character that had so much depth and tension within him that you had to appreciate his perspective and respect his stance when you engage him on the battlefield. The fact that he can be good and bad it's something we felt right away and we believe that he was the perfect cast because of this empathy that gives us two edges to the same character. We've chosen to become the warriors we were meant to be. What we've tried to achieve here is a balance between realism and fantasy. I'm a Special Forces Medical Sergeant. I served three years in the Air Force and I've been in the Army for 14 years. My entire time in the Army has been in Special Forces. I've always loved storytelling. From the time I was a kid, it was my escape. Narrative immersion was how I sort of coped with the world. Films, books, comics, games. I always sort of had a drive to pursue content creation. Got a degree in theater with concentrations in acting and writing and was pursuing writing and directing for film. And I had the opportunity to come on board with this game. And of course, because of my background in Special Forces, my role on this project evolved very quickly into the military technical advisor and consultant for gameplay, mechanics, motion capture, sort of all that stuff. What we dictate is real is real. 
we try to heighten that by injecting as many realistic details as possible. So the weapons function like real weapons. We worked really closely with the pre-visualization team, the animators, the developers, all the programmers to help give the game a feeling of authenticity while remaining playable. It has to move at a fast pace. It has to be innovative and exciting. There has to be a lot of challenges. So the trick was finding the balance between authentic details and the playable fantasy. And it can be difficult because sometimes real tactics or real details might not be as compelling to watch or to look at or to play. In every single decision we make, we ask ourselves this question. What does it mean in terms of realism? But you also want to keep the gameplay element strong. And we always believe that in the end, we made the best decision possible for the quality of the game. And the truth is when I play games like this, I'm able to suspend disbelief when I jump out of the helicopter, when I fly it, you know, I can't fly a helicopter, but I can in this game. And when I fly that helicopter and I decide to just jump out and I happen to have a parachute on, I never doubt for a moment that I'm there because the helicopter looks and sounds very real. It has a very sort of real feel when it flies. It's very difficult to maneuver. It's, I'm immersed in the fantasy. I'm able to take it all as part of the fantasy. And that's what we're creating is that fantasy that has enough details of realism that you can, you know, you recognize recognize the weapons, you recognize the gear, you say, hey, I know that tack vest or that helmet is something I have seen on soldiers. And that's really what it's about. It's not about being real. It's about feeling authentic. It's about the fantasy feeling immersive so that you believe you're there in the boots of these soldiers. I got you. What do I hope players come away with when they finish the story? Truthfully, I hope that when they finish this episode, they want to keep playing. My hope is that the story, the narrative is so compelling and immersive that they want to know what happens next. A lot of people have put a lot of work into creating an overarching narrative trajectory that will carry us through post-launch content. And that's the idea. We want this game to be fun, to feel real, to be so immersive that as it comes to an end, you are just waiting for the next challenge.